In this video, I'm going to talk about variable scope. That is, the visibility of variables, which programs can see and use a variable. The scope of a variable depends on how and where you declare it, as you'll see. I'm also going to show you a simple logon application, which makes use of multiple Windows forms and a variable with project level scope. Let's start by talking about variable scope. I'm going to place two buttons on this form because I want two sub procedures. It's good practice to name controls like buttons as you put them onto the form, but for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to bother this time. Let's write some code. There's a very simple procedure for button one. Indeed, it couldn't be much simpler. Now let's write some code for button two. I'm going to copy the code from button one into the procedure for button two, but I'm going to remove the declaration of X. And straight away, I've got a compiler warning. I can see the red wavy line wherever there's an X, and if I hover over it, X is not declared. So this is the first scope of a variable, which I want to talk to you about. We call it procedure level scope. X has been declared inside the procedure which runs when you click on button one, and it's only available to that procedure. When the procedure for button one begins to run, the operating system sets aside a piece of memory, which the button one procedure refers to as X. That piece of memory can only be accessed by the procedure for button one. No other procedure can see it. It's protected. Another name for procedure level scope is local scope. X is a local variable as far as the procedure for button one is concerned. If I try to run up the form now, I get a compiler warning. There's a problem which I need to deal with. If I declare X inside the procedure for button two, it's important to realize that when the procedure for button two is running, it is given a piece of memory, which it refers to as X, but it's a different piece of memory. It just happens to be using the same name. I've declared another local variable. So what if I want both procedures to see the same piece of memory? That's easily done. I'm simply going to move the dim statement out of this procedure and place it at the form level. Notice that neither of the procedures has a compiler error now. And to prove the point, watch what happens when I do this. I'm not going to initialize the value of X in button one's procedure. When I run the first procedure, the value of X is zero, which makes sense. It hasn't been given an initial value yet. When I run procedure two, the value of X has been initialized to five and then its output. But once I dismiss the message box, X will then be given a new value of seven. So if I run procedure one again, X now has a value of seven. This proves the point that both procedures are now working with the same piece of memory. We say that variable X has form level scope. You might also hear it referred to as module level scope, because all of the code you can see here is in a module which is associated with form one. I've increased the scope of X by putting the dim statement at the form level, but I can also narrow the scope of a variable like this. 
Watch what happens when I run the procedure for button 1. That's the value of x. And here's the value of i within the for loop. Notice that I didn't explicitly declare the variable i. I didn't use a dim statement. I've implicitly declared it on this line by simply starting to use it. I could have included an as clause if I wanted to, like this. But what's important to realise is that i is only available within the for loop. Watch what happens if I attempt to do this. I'm having trouble typing the letter i. And you can see there's another compiler error. i is not declared. i has what we call block level scope. i can only be used within this for loop. So there are three levels of scope that we've seen so far. There's procedure level scope, the so-called local variable. There's module level scope. And we've also got block level scope. Let's move on now and see how two different Windows forms can make use of the same variable. I'm going to build a simple little logon system, so I'm going to add another form to my project. I've just right clicked inside the Solution Explorer, and there's a form. It's going to be called Form 2, and that's now part of my project. I'm going to rename this form as well. I'll call it Logon. Visual Studio is very kindly offering to change all references to Form 2 to Logon, which makes perfect sense. There could be code within my project that's referring to Form 2. I don't want that code to fail. Now, I want my logon form to be the first form that hits the screen when you run the application. And I can do that in the project properties. I just change the startup form here. So there's my original form with two buttons on it. And here's my new logon form, which hasn't got anything on it yet. Let's just save everything. And I'll make sure that the logon form is the startup form for my application. Let's use it to prompt for a username and a password. And the idea is, if the username and password are correct, we'll display the other form. Before we test the username and the password, let's make sure we can get from one form to another. Form1.show. It's as simple as that. And when Form1 is on the screen, I'd like the logon form to become unavailable. So when Form1 hits the screen, we'll hide the logon form. We'll do that from Form 1. In Form 1's load event. Let's try that out. Yep, so when Form 1 is there, the logon form isn't. What I'd like to happen now is when I close Form 1, I'd like the logon form to come back again. Let's do that. The logon button displays form 1. The logon form is hidden, and when I close form 1,
the logon form reappears. I should probably have a close button on form 1. Let's do that. Me dot close. Me is how the code behind form 1 can refer to form 1. Okay, so we have a little bit of form juggling going on, but what I'd like to do now is authenticate the user, open up form 1, but I'd like to send some information from one form to another. And to achieve this, I need a variable which has got a broad enough scope for both forms to see it. I need a global variable. This is how it's done. I'm going to add a module to my project. A module is just a container for code, but it has no user interface, and I'm going to declare a variable inside the module. Notice this time I'm using the public keyword rather than dim. In some programming languages, you can achieve the same effect using the global keyword. In vb.net, it's public. Now let's authenticate the user. So, I'm only going to open Form 1 conditionally. You've got to type in the right username and password. OK, in reality, you wouldn't hard code usernames and passwords like this. You'd probably store them in a database. And in a later video, I will be showing you how you can retrieve things from a database. That's another story. In addition to opening Form 1, I'm also going to set a value for the global variable. No compiler errors. When Form 1 loads, we'll welcome the user. I could even place a label on the form with the user's name on it. Let's do that. We'll start with a blank label. and we'll set its text property when the form loads. Let's try it out. And that's working nicely. So there we have it. Four different levels of variable scope. There's block level scope, procedure level scope or local scope, module level scope, and now we've got public scope. There's just a couple of things I'd like to do to tidy up this application. First of all, I'm going to change the text property of each form. And another thing I'd like to do is mask the password while it's being typed. That is very easy to do. A text box has a password character property. I'll use an asterisk. Why don't you try building a little logon system yourself and use some global variables so you can pass information between forms?